Um, call to order the uh, work session for Wednesday, November the 2nd. And I'd ask everyone to indulge me and just let's have a moment of silence for the poor people out in California and what they're going for. Thank you. The first item on the agenda tonight is a discussion on the mayoral veto of ordinance number 1848, an ordinance to approve the revelation, the revitalization overlay area, number one conceptual plan for the Laurel Shopping Center development with conditions and providing for an effective date. I have placed this on the agenda after giving you all enough time to think about the mayor's response and what we want to do, if anything. Does the council or anyone want to have a say on what the mayoral veto states at this time? Seeing none, the veto will stay as the mayor has demanded. Number two, resolution number 1115, a resolution concerning Anderson's Corner Tax Increment Financing District a designation and creation of a special fund, etc. A resolution adopted pursuant to section 12-201 at SEC of the Economic Development Article and of the Annotated Code of the State of Maryland, in quotes, the Act, in anticipation of issuance of the Mayor and City Council of Laurel, in brackets, the City, of its special obligation bonds providing for designation and contiguous properties in the city of Laurel generally bonded by bounded by Van Dusen Road in the Northwest Conti Road and the Northeast and proposed extension of Conti Road that will uh, lie within the Northwest of the existing Virginia Manor Court to the Southeast and the Contar Drive to the Southwest in quote, I mean, in brackets, the district, for the purpose of the act, creating a special fund pursuant to the act, providing for a dis dis deposit of and use of monies in such special fund, pledging that the city will allocate and divide property taxes on real property within the district so that certain portions of the real property tax, in brackets, the tax increment, will be allocated and paid into a special fund and providing for the funding and determining matters in connection therewith. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Dory. Bob Dory, Miles and Stockbridge Bond Council. Um, this is the resolution which would create the tax increment financing district out at Anderson's Corner, uh, which will uh, serve as the basis for a split of the taxes on the properties out there so that the existing taxes and 40% of any increase in taxes would come to the city but 60% of the taxes would go to pay tax increment financing bonds to be authorized by the ordinance that's coming up later. And um, the, um, the purpose of the, the bonds to be issued pursuant to the ordinance, I'll put them all together, um, up to four million two of bonds, um, to be used to finance the acquisition of land for a public park uh, and to finance a portion of the cost of a sewer extension and enlargement out in that area to serve the uh, two of the properties in the district uh, owned by Ribera Anderson's Corner and by uh, Avalon Laurel, um, which their properties are the ones who are going to pay the tax to support the debt. Uh, the, uh, the bonds will be for a maximum of 30 years for a maximum interest rate of 8%. Uh, 
all subject to being finally determined, final amount of the bonds and those other details being determined by the mayor, assuming that the, uh, that the council approves this legislation. Go ahead, Mayor. Um, Bob, before, um, cause it, for anybody that may be watching, let's remind people what this increment is for the tax. Sure. It's for public. Uh, it's, it's, it is for public uh, improvements, the park, the sewer extension. Um, and the tax increment is basically the increase in taxes resulting from the development which the city is encouraging by uh, uh, making these public improvements. Um, the, um, the tax increment is that increase. As I said, the, the tax increment under the legislation uh, is going to be 60% uh, used to pay off the tax increment bonds and 40% comes to the city to cover ongoing costs of the city as you Not have, a giveaway as, my as you have always required um, the, um, the the bonds are expected to be sold to a uh, uh, an affiliate or member of uh, the Rivera Anderson's corner of uh, I guess uh, Bob, uh, Bob DePietro and Eric DeVito are here representing the developer and I'll let them talk to as if they have any comments about how that would be done but that's our understanding uh, at this point and the the details of the bonds then would be negotiated with them but as bond council you're satisfied as bond council this thing works it's uh, it fits well within the statute and the purposes for which the money would be spent are clearly authorized Thank you, Mr. Jerk. Does the council have any questions at all? Um, I, Mr. President, I, I do have one really quick one. Um, uh, in looking through uh, this resolution, I just want to direct us to page 9, section 9. Um, $4.2 um, million dollars, is that the maximum that is the maximum amount the current uh, projections that are in the actual application that was furnished to the city is something in the order of three million six okay um, and uh, we'll make sure that the cost we did that on the last one I thought mm -hmm. up to mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I brought to the attention right yeah. very good thank you sir thank okay. you mr. Les Thank you, Mr. President. As you know, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for, you can sit down. Please Very sit good. down. Okay. Uh, as you know, I'm an advocate for TIF. Uh, it improves property within the city. It increases taxes. It pays dividends in, in future years. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to add a park. Uh, we're also going to increase, uh, uh, increase, increase the availability of utilities by extending the sewer line, and so on. Uh, as the mayor has pointed out, and we've had to, every time this comes up, uh, there's a misconception by our constituents that we're giving something away. And I will only point out to add to what the mayor said, we don't have anything to give away. We're going to get. The citizens are going to benefit, and that's important. And, and along with what Mr. Small said, uh, that's the maximum amount we think. And the 8% is actually the maximum amount we believe to. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. DePietro, you have anything to add? Uh, you have a question. Anybody? Ms. Query. I didn't see you asking me. <laughs> Mr. Dory, could you just explain... Uh, for everyone's edification in that the special funds isn't something that's created on the city level budget. It, it, excuse me? The special funds pot, if you will, right. how that's created and what goes into it. Yeah, the special fund is created and actually in this instance is probably going to be held uh, by the director of finance. Into it goes all of the tax increment 
forty percent of it comes out and you allocate it in your budget, and the other sixty percent stays in there to pay the debt service on the bonds. Um, coming from coming from the increase in taxes. Right. But only from the increase. And not from the taxpayers. It's coming from no, this it property. Co it, co it comes from these properties that are within right. the district and the taxes that they pay are allocated and a portion of them go into the special fund. The, all of them go into the special fund, but a portion of them stay in there. The rest comes out to the city. Thank you very much. Mayor? I just want to remind everybody, bond council and attorney fees are also part of this as well. That they pick <laughs> up. <laughs> just make sure to get that on the record. Mr. Lez, you have something to follow up? <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. And Mr. Petro, I'm glad you got the memo on the address tonight. This will be uh, on the agenda for Monday, December the 14th council meeting at 7 p.m. here in council chambers. Item number three, this is ordinance number 1856, an ordinance concerning Anderson's Corners tax increment financing special obligation bonds, an ordinance of the mayor and city council of Laurel in, in brackets, the city, pursuant to and in accordance with section 12-201 at SEC, of the Economic Development Article and Annotated Code of the State of Maryland, in brackets, the Act, authorizing and empowering the city to issue up to $4.2 million of its obligations or its special obligation bonds and determining a maximum interest rate and maximum maturity date in order to finance and or reimburse, one, the cost of, A, acquisition of the certain real property in Anderson's Corner Development District for use as a city park, and B, construction of certain public infrastructure improvements relating to Anderson's Corner Development District, and two, other costs permitted under the Act, providing that such bonds and interest thereon shall never constitute a general obligation of the city of Laurel and or pledge in the full faith and credit providing for uh, further specifications, prescriptions, determinations, provisions for or approval of various other matters, details, documents, and procedures in connection with the authorization, issuance, security, sale, and payment of any such bonds, making certain legislative findings expressly providing that this ordinance shall not be subject to being petitioned or referendum and generally providing for the issuance of special obligation bonds in accordance with the act. Mr. Dury again. Uh, I, I guess I will simply say that my prior testimony was intended to cover this legislation and what you just read emphasizes the, the questions and, and comments which the council and the mayor have made. There's no obligation of the city. No obligation of the city. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the council? Ms. Query? Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. DiPietro. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here. This also will be on the agenda for uh, Monday, December the 14th at 7 p.m. and uh, for possible action. Item number four, ordinance amending various sections of Laurel City Code, Chapter 17, Traffic, Article 3, Stopping, Standing, Parking, Division 1, Generally, and Division 3, Snow Emergencies, and Chapter 17, Article 7 schedules to increase fines for certain traffic and parking offenses in the city of Laurel and repealing and reenacting Laurel City Code Section 17-100 violations and penalties from Article 4 bicycles and other recreational vehicles to Article 1 in general in quotes as Section 17-5 and increasing the fine for the first violation. And Council Grant, City Council, this is up to the Chief. Mr. President, the 
purpose behind this legislation is that it has been in excess of 10 years that any changes, increases, or adjustments have been made in regards to parking fines for a first offense. So there was a, we went through the list, made some recommendations for some increases of fines to bring them more in line with the surrounding areas. Um, and as a result of that, this legislation was proposed, drafted and proposed. Okay. And if you'd like, we can go through the entire list or oh, we no. can just leave it as it is. <laughs> no, not tonight. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Chief. Any questions from the council? Mr. Bless. Let me, just a general question. We made a provision years ago for the mayor and the administration to have authority to change some dollar revenues coming to city charges. The question I have is Mike, get your, get your mic. Yeah, I'm sorry. Since we have this fine attorney here, she's better looking than Bob Manzi. Don't forget to remind him. But uh, the question is could we? Pass legislation that would defer this type of action to the mayor and administration to take with a periodic review by the city council. Now that it's currently in the city code, yep. you have to amend the code. I understand that for this time. For this time. But for future changes, could we do that? What I've just I suggested. I think I think do that. I think generally your fines and penalties really? are to be enacted by ordinance okay. of the legislative body under what used to be 23A. I can't, right. um, it's a local government article now, and I can't think of the exact section. Um, I did some research, and that's what it, I mean. I, I hear the mayor saying, no, we don't want to do that. But again, some places I, do it by resolution, they pull the. Um, the fines out of the code and they do it as a as a resolution generally done in conjunction with your budget okay but i have never seen it taken out of the hands of the legislative okay. body you've answered my question thank you mr president mike I, um i just want to make a comment the only reason i say it, i think this should stay in council's hands when we moved certain things out, it was mainly administratively, but right. we kept all the fines in, if you recall, um, so that there is a check and balance there and that the council has a say in, and represents the opinion of the community, quite right, frankly. But it was anything that was a violation uh, penalty, I think we kept in council's hands. It had to come before council. I just a thought that came up when I yes, saw you. this. Thank you. Anyone thank else from council? Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you, Chief. Be on our agenda. Your CAC approved it as well. Okay. The CAC approved it, I'm told, as well. Which your CAC it. Yeah, I said oh, CAC. <laughs> he forgot. I said. That shave he got on top of his head. I said the CAC approved it as well. Okay. <laughs> Pick everything up, Mark. <laughs> All right, item number five, consideration of recommendation to replace the playground equipment at Granville Goody Park. <laughs> Mr. Lodsky. Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. President, Mayor and City Council. should have a memorandum before you dated November 30th, 2015, titled Playground Proposal Granville Goody Park. Um, the City of Laurel recently received a grant of $250,000 from the Community Parks and Playground Program. This is administered through the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. Her desire was in, to improve the aging playground at Goody Park. This playground was uh, installed, the current playground was installed in 1999. Thank you, Mr. Les, for reminding me of that. Uh, we're, we also are having some problems there with erosion <clears throat> in and around the playground area. We currently have a design for replacing the playground in hand. The play structure from Game Time and Cunningham Re Recreation enables us to ride the, and take advantage of the contract from U.S. Communities. U.S. Communities, as you may recall, is a uh, program that's recognized and promoted by the National League of Cities. We've been a member of the U.S. Communities program for a number of years now. And uh, one of the categories that we're able to ride is uh, playground equipment. They currently have a contract, Game Time does, through the city of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we asked Mr. Manzi to verify the, uh, the program the, uh, and the, the ability to ride the uh, contract. He has done that and he has approved that uh, we should be able to ride that contract. Um, 
Mr. Frost is going to put a couple couple renderings up on the screens now for you to take a look at. Uh, this is the proposed new pr uh, playground. We've got an area for the two to five year olds and the five to 12 year olds. Um, if you look to the right, we also are expanding the playground a little bit. That climbing structure to the right there is, is going to be something brand new. So the footprint of the current playground is going to be a little, is going to be a little bit larger with this new proposed playground. Um, you'll notice it will be the poured rubber instead of the wood mulch uh, that uh, we currently have there. And um, this, this area, as you know, is probably one of our most used, used parks. A lot of people come down and use the playground while they're running a picnic pavilion or walk in the park with their kids. And um, so we're, we're really excited about being able to replace it with something really nice. Um, as I said, uh, the uh, proposal from Cunningham Recreation and Game Time is uh, for $234,982.32. Um, you may recall that we were dealing with West Recreation for a long time with the Game Time product, and Mr. West is retired. And uh, Cunningham, who is very, um, has, has several large areas, including the Carolinas, has uh, bought uh, Mr. West's area at this time. Uh, funding, again, for this project is through the Community Park and Playground Grant, $250,000. This is a non-matching grant, um, so we do not have to put any city money into that. And the recommendation would be, after review by the city and staff, and Mr. Manzi has recommended that the Mayor and City Council award the playground replacement contract to Game Time and Cunningham Recreation for $234,982.32. Uh, the leftover money will be, they will allow us, uh, Community Park and Playground, to... Uh, to do the erosion improvements down by the playground. Council, questions? Ms. This is where the existing playground is now? That, that's a drawing of the new playground, just the uh, know, bird's but, eye view. But the area will be the same. Will be the same area with the exception of bumping out for that play structure just a little bit. The um, shade trees that are there now? should not be affected. So the green